my name is Aaron Fresnel. I'm with the Jefferson Institute. Uh, I'm here at the uh, Military Academy in North Macedonia with the Dean of the Academy, uh, Mitko Bogdanossi. Um, he's uh, been very generous in, in allowing us to, uh, to uh, use this facility here to, uh, uh, to, to webcast. I think it's actually in many ways uh, really suitable that we have uh, this conversation uh, um, here in the uh, um, in the military academy of our newest uh, NATO member. Um, uh, also uh, joining me here uh, on the panel is uh, Nicholas Lung from uh, the uh, um, from the Swedish Armed Forces, Maxim Tyshenko from the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Uh, they both work with the uh, the ADL teams in in their countries uh, in their uh, in their militaries. Um, within the education community there. Uh, uh, and Mitko also here is, uh, uh, his uh, earlier life was uh, a leader in, in the ADL uh, team here at the, the military academy. And I think, especially in this pandemic uh, era, it uh, shouldn't be a big surprise that a leader in the ADL community, uh, after having responded uh, um, to the, uh, the crisis, uh, Macedonia basically within days, uh, switched their academy to 100% online. Um, with that big success, uh, it, uh, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that he was uh, uh, just a few weeks ago promoted to, uh, to dean of the academy. Um, so if, if you'd like to make a few uh, um, early remarks, then the floor is yours. Thank you, Aaron. First, thank you for being here. It is really uh, important for us to have uh, your institute, to have your people present here. Uh, we just organized one event here to Radley, together with you, with your support, which is also important regional activity. Uh, many of the actually challenges we were facing in the past, we solved through uh, Radley project with your support as well. And uh, I think that uh, we saw the uh, importance of ADL, especially uh, during the pandemics, and we were really ready before the pandemics uh, to answer to this challenge. Uh, we organize all the events online, all the activities with the cadets. I'm not saying that everything can be, I mean, we need cadets here, we need for some of the activities, but many activities we saw that can be done uh, through online or through some hiring mode, etc. And uh, for sure, in the future, we'll focus more of the uh, courses, etc., to be, to be in hybrid mode. And uh, I saw actually that you are actually today you will discuss about very important topic. Why I'm saying that it's important, and I'm very glad to see that NATO is working with some standard, which is related with uh, ADL or usage of uh, uh, ADL for uh, access for exercises, etc. Just an example: uh, to ten days ago, actually we organized uh, one. TTX, regional TTX here, which was sponsored by uh, US State Department. We, we have done together with uh, uh, CRDF Global, uh, one other institution. And uh, but I think that uh, everything was, and was in hybrid mode again. Some were physically present here, some were uh, online. And uh, one of the challenges we face is that I mean, uh, the, the problem we, we try to see if there are some standards how to. To this uh, TTX, if they, they exist, but in, in we couldn't see. I mean, we couldn't find something that is, uh, I mean, at least uh, that can be used for for this TTX. And I think that if uh, if NATO actually provides such a standard, it will be very important for us, for for the countries, for for the at least for, for this region. I'm not sure for US, but actually maybe you have some standards, but here we don't have, and it will be more than important to to, to have. And if you can provide. You know, with standards, it will be great for us to actually follow the standards and, uh, and it will be much easier to, to, for us to, to see how we can proceed with uh, future exercises and PDFs which are based on the material part. So, one more time, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, thank you for supporting us. Thanks. And just to mention that actually, for uh, more than, it's like on the beginning of November, we are uh, hosting also NTD uh, here. So, Whoever actually from the present year is taking a look at the vision, which online is okay, but we are also inviting them to take a uh, participation with this digital presence. So 
prove to each other uh, again in a different So thank you again for being the call, and I'm, I'll be here with you if you have any questions. Yes, there are people to ask, and I will try to answer. Thank you. Excellent. And, and I can only uh, uh, second that we spent uh, uh, two days here with the Radley Initiative, which is the regional ADL initiative. So it's a, an ADL initiative of, uh, of, of uh, driven by an, uh, uh, bilateral MOUs between the ministries of Slovenia, uh, uh, Bosnia, um, uh, Serbia, and, and North Macedonia. Um, uh, they meet uh, annually and work collaboratively, sort of like Nordefco does. Uh, on on, uh, on uh, issue, uh, issues around uh, um, ADL technology, pedagogy, professional networking uh, standards, uh, and and uh, and event organizing. Uh, the, the Macedonia was an incredible uh, venue for us. Um, I highly recommend if you have the opportunity to get to the NTG meeting uh, uh, coming up here in early November. You take advantage of that registration. It's closing soon, so grab that one. But let's get into the slides. So, uh, Liz, if you could advance one, please. Um, uh, and, and you helped set this up really well. Thank you uh, um, for why ADL in, in exercises. Uh, I mean, the, the pandemic certainly helps prove the point, uh, but, but really uh, uh, we want to think about ADL um, in exercises beyond uh, just uh, helping with uh, um, online access to pre-training materials. I mean, it really is uh, looking at uh, um, aiming at a, at a higher level. So we really are aiming to support readiness itself. Right? Um, uh, and in the process and, and doing that by making sure that first and foremost, we are, uh, through the ADL processes, or the integration of ADL as exercises, um, that we align one-to-one -one, uh, the learning objectives uh, and, the, uh, and the training objectives. Um, and make sure that whatever it is that we're doing is truly, with, with the ADL uh, side, is truly operationally uh, uh, relevant. Um, and, uh, and in that, uh, we have the opportunity to, uh, to really uh, begin to experiment um, with ADL in that operational environment, uh, working with real soldiers. So you have uh, real war fighters uh, um, who are really using the ADL tools, we get immediate feedback from them. And they're tough customers, rightfully so. Um, and it's uh, it's much more effective than trying to run uh, um, ADL in a laboratory environment where you have paid testers or whatever. No, when you give it to soldiers uh, and they give you plus or minus uh, feedback, especially at a granular level, it's incredibly valuable. Um, in the process, we can then validate Right? So whether we're validating new technologies, new pedagogical approaches, new combinations of pedagogy and, uh, and different technologies applied in different ways at different times through the course of the exercise cycle, all of this uh, is, is a great validation opportunity. Again, you're putting the tools in the hands of, of uniforms, and yet still in a relatively controlled and contained environment where you can take measurement, um, you can observe, and sort of see what's going on. Uh, and, and so in that way, it's, it's a wonderful validation opportunity. Obviously, it's high visibility, right? So the DB day is, is a great opportunity to take the successes um, and show them off um, and, uh, and spread that ink lot of, uh, of the success of, of uh, hopefully, the success of, of what we've achieved through the exercise uh, um, integration with, uh, uh, with, with ADL. Um, and then ultimately, of course, uh, um, in the write-up afterwards, it becomes a compelling case study. Um, and uh, what we consistently have found is that exercise seri uh, exercises oftentimes occur as a series, right? So you'll have uh, Viking 14, Viking 18, Viking 22, uh, um, and, uh, and the integration of ADL into those exercises is, uh, is iterative, right? So it begins, your first entry is going to be at a relatively uh, basic and low level, but you grab that case study of success, uh, the lessons learned, and you use that to uh, to step up uh, on the integration in, in the next cycle uh, of, of the exercise as it comes around. Thanks. Um, so the ADL community is, uh, um, uh, the international actors in, in ADL are quite diverse, um, but they overlap pretty nicely. They've got relatively well-segmented uh, roles and responsibilities. All of them are involved um, one way or another in uh, uh, in this in this joint effort on uh, integrating ADL into exercises, multinational exercises. 
Um, so the ADL Global Partnership um, is uh, uh, run by the uh, the ADL Initiative and is largely linked in with uh, with the DADLAC, uh, the Defense ADL uh, um, Advisory Committee um, from across the uh, U.S. Um, uh, security institutions. That is mainly a science and technology research and development group. Uh, the PFPC ADL Working Group. So it's PFPC Consortium uh, AG, uh, ADL Working Group. Is uh, it's a collection of uh, of, uh, of ADL directors uh, and and key actors from across the allied and partner nations. So these are the worker bees. These are the folks who are out there um, uh, with their knees in the mud. Uh, um, getting servers running, uh, um, uh, delivering uh, e-learning content, um, uh, battling uh, bureaucracies to make things work. Uh, they're, they're the real worker bees. Uh, the NTG, uh, NATO Training Group for uh, Individual uh, uh, Training and Education, ITMED, um, is uh, um, the standards organization for NATO. The, and the NTG, ITMED, owns uh, on the standards for, for ADL within NATO. Um, ultimately, all those three things, uh, all those, those three groups together uh, um, overlap in that uh, joint uh, um, emphasis on driving towards uh, developing the capability to really to at least establish the foundation for capturing the ROI of training um, and, and of course all through the partnership. <clears throat> Only to emphasize again, I mean, we sometimes lose track of this the partnerships, strengthening partnerships and allies is the second uh, pillar of uh, the U.S. national defense strategy. Um, along with lethality and, uh, and business practices, partnership is, is right up there um, as a key function uh, of our national defense strategy. Slide please. And I think partnerships like this slide really show how that, uh, uh, why partnership is so important. The MADMIX project itself is a project uh, of uh, a research project of, uh, of ADL in the United States, the ADL initiative, um, and, and we are tasked with uh, um, testing that hypothesis that you get improved operational effectiveness by participants who utilize um, ADL learning content in an exercise. Um, and that seems like a relatively straightforward hypothesis. We know it in our hearts. Yes, that must be true, um, but getting good empirical data uh, uh, to prove it is hard, um, and especially that integration uh, um, challenge uh, is is uh, is really hard because exercises themselves are uh, um, their own little world, and they have uh, the people who are dedicated to them uh, feel strong ownership uh, over their exercise. Um, they have um, they're juggling a lot of really hot issues. They don't have time for uh, extra uh, folks to come into the story and. Uh, um, and start messing with their, uh, with their, their uh, carefully built, sometimes fragile systems. Uh, and, and so it's uh, super challenging, um, but ultimately really exciting to work with folks um, uh, um, to help them understand that we're, uh, uh, we're, we're here to solve their problems, uh, not add new problems, um, and to really bring uh, meat and proof and empirical evidence to, uh, to the hypothesis that, uh, that we're uh, um, the, that we're enhancing uh, effectiveness of, uh, of improving the performance results of the training audience within their exercise. Um, so we've gotten a lot done so far within that Madlex project. Um, started out in 2018 with Viking 18. Um, and in the meantime, we've uh, um, integrated uh, with, uh, uh, ADL into eight separate, uh, quite diverse uh, exercises, um, both domestic, U.S. and multinational. CACs, uh, but also uh, LiveX, um, and both at the tactical and operational level. So everything from a staff exercise, staff CACs, uh, to field medical uh, um, teams working with, uh, uh, with sensor technology. Um, and in that, uh, we've managed to, uh, uh, with, with the, uh, the ADL technologies and the, uh, and the performance uh, um, side, both delivery metrics, um, uh, we're able to demonstrate uh, that the, uh, the e-learning uh, um, uh, delivers uh, real boosts in performance, effectiveness gains for the training audience. Um, in, uh, um, in the last year, and there'll be an ITSEC paper that, that uh, comes out uh, um, later on this, this year to, uh, to lay out the details on it. But for example, uh, for a national Ukrainian exercise, it's a staff officer exercise, 
uh, we showed that with just classic uh, um, ADL um, uh, course pre-training, uh, um, we were able to witness between a control group and a treatment group uh, an 8% boost in performance uh, against the, the exercise training objectives when you mixed uh, the classic um, e-learning uh, with micro-learning available during the course itself. That meant things like uh, um, checklists, uh, form templates, uh, that kind of thing. Things that you would need very quickly and, uh, and are immediately useful uh, as reminders uh, um, during the exercise itself. You get a, a boost of 20% um, uh, for those exercises between the control and, uh, and the treatment group. So uh, real improvements in, in performance on the exercise objectives uh, um, and, uh, and, and built in a uh, relatively controlled uh, scientific experimental way um, that's replicable. Uh, um, the insights that we've captured um, have, uh, have uh, been fed into a variety of sources. Um, JSG7 has been a great collaborator with us, uh, but importantly, uh, the, um, uh, it's, we've done enough now that it's time to pause and reflect and capture some of the lessons learned um, and share them uh, in uh, standards and guidance documents. Um, and so this is what has brought us to the, uh, the, the MTG for, uh, for uh, IT and ED um, and, the, uh, and its ADL handbook, which is an official NATO document uh, that, that we'll be providing this, this annex on ADL and exercises to. So the, uh, uh, the MTG itself, uh, unfortunately, uh, Paul Thurkettle isn't here to, to uh, talk through this slide. Um, uh, um, he's the, uh, uh, the co-chair of, of the uh, MTG along with uh, Dr. Seychaps. Um, uh, so again, the, the AT, uh, MTG itself is, uh, and, and the IT ED uh, um, group is, owns NATO standards for, uh, for ADL. They meet twice a year uh, um, and, uh, and have a variety of task groups within it. Um, uh, the task groups are each uh, um, led by one uh, nation, ally or partner, um, and along with several other nations uh, chipping in uh, to support on, on the staff side. And uh, depending on the task group, uh, they may be maintaining the current standard, they may be exploring space where standards may be considered, or they may be uh, developing new, new standards. Um, they also have a, a number of other efforts, including facilitating course sharing content um, uh, and, uh, and liaison efforts between NATO and, and academic institutions, training centers with, within the, uh, the allied and partner nations. So the, uh, the contributors to this particular annex uh, um, are in a, a task group that is led by Sweden. Um, uh, along with Ukraine, um, uh, the United States, and, uh, and NATO. Um, uh, we have uh, now interest by a couple other countries as well, but at the moment, this is where we stand. Um, so uh, I will take a quick pause here now there and shift over to Nicholas from Sweden uh, to tell us about uh, what it is that drew Sweden to, to chair this task group for the MTG. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Niklas Jung, and I'm a major in the Swedish Armed Forces Development Unit for Leadership and Pedagogy. I work there as a uh, project manager and a concept developer. And as uh, Aaron mentioned, uh, I am together with uh, my colleague Thomas Axe, a task lead in this uh, annex for integrating ADL in exercises. Uh, we are situated in the southwestern part of Sweden, uh, but we work with um, all the armed forces. Uh, I'm going to sort of share a, a short story of how we got involved in this and why we think this is important to, to the Swedish armed forces. And, and to be able to do that, I have to go back a couple of years uh, to 2013 when we procured a cloud-based LMS in the Swedish Armed Forces. Uh, and for the first couple of years, we were a small unit and we had to work pretty hard to sort of implement the, the learning management system and the thinking around ADL in the Swedish Armed Forces. 
but we, as we went along about 2016, um, we decided to take a step back and uh, analyze how we progressed so far. Uh, we found that the number of users within the school system, within the education system, was well over the threshold we have anticipated and it was growing organically. So we thought we could take sort of a step back. Of course, we had to continue supporting the development and continue the development of ADL. But one thing we found out was that it was used uh, in a good way in the within the educational system, but on the more operational side of, of the armed forces, it was hardly used at all. We thought that they were going to start using it for, for pre-training and exercises, pre-deployment training, used during deployment, but um, none of that happened. And at the same time, we also started thinking about the more informal or lifelong learning cycle, and we saw that very little of uh, the learning that actually takes place outside the classroom, outside the school system, uh, was it was not captured, it was not stored, visualized, it wasn't linked to any credentials, and we want to sort of address that problem. Um, at about that time, we came across the concept of total learning architecture. Uh, at first, we thought that it was a bit technical, and uh, actually, we didn't quite understand it. Uh, still, don't uh, to its full extent, of course. But uh, after digging into it uh, for a while, we we realized that this is what we're looking for. <laughs> so we contacted uh, firstly our US partners and uh, started discussing how we could integrate ADL in, into the more operational side, and also how we in a better way could capture the more informal learning uh, from a lifelong learning perspective. And um, we quickly found out that, uh, that our needs coincided. So after some discussion, we, we decided to sort of start a bilateral project at first uh, addressing these issues. And uh, we also quickly agreed to work with the exercises and uh, first First off was uh, the uh, Viking 18 exercises that was uh, beginning to, to start its first planning stages. And we did that for, for two main reasons. First of all, uh, as Aaron mentioned a while back, that I think exercises are, are a good place for experimentation and concept development. Uh, they have pretty clear goals, the start and end uh, in a reasonable time. Uh, it happens a lot in, in this uh, short time frame. It has a defined planning process and um, the training audience is closely monitored and we can measure results from different interventions quite easily. And it's also uh, recurrent events uh, usually, and that means we can iterate the approach and, and take the lessons we learned and, and move forward. Um, and on top of that, of course, if we succeed in these attempts, we will have some sort of operational effect uh, also. And um, one of the reasons we, we choose Viking was that uh, the US and Sweden has a uh, memorandum of understanding, so we could start working on that quite easily. Um, but early in the process, we, we realized that we, we will not be able to pull this off by ourselves. So therefore, we formed an international ADL working group and we, we were getting a lot of people on board, the JKO, the NATO, PFPC, uh, lots of NATO and PFPC individual nations, the Radley group. Um, and this sort of added another benefit from us. It, it was strengthening international cooperation and international alliances. So in short, uh, we expect and have also been benefiting from this project in three, mainly three ways. We think it will contribute to more effective and uh, efficient exercises and also deployment, pre-deployment training, and uh, even in operations. And we think that that's the way to go. And um, we also think that framed into to an exercise, it's possible to sort of create a mini total learning architecture, a mini um, 
uh, yeah, uh, mini total learning architecture framework, so to speak. And I think that the lessons learned for, from this approach can be used as sort of proof of concept uh, or as a stepping stone when we move into the process of forming a more enterprise level learning ecosystem or, or total learning architecture in the Swedish armed forces. And of course, it's uh, it's a way of further strengthening uh, our international alliances. And uh, I think that this annex is a, is a cornerstone in, in achieving this. It makes it easier to talk about and easier to present and easier to have something to relate to. So that's that's in, in short what what uh, we see from a Swedish perspective. So thank you and over to you again, Aaron. Thanks so much, Nicholas. Um, uh, Maxime, what, t tell us a little bit from the Ukrainian perspective. What is it that uh, that drew Ukraine to this task group? Uh, from the Ukrainian side, uh, regarding the ADL and exercises, we uh, started in 2019, uh, late 2019, starting to uh, playing with the uh, EDL and exercises. So it was the, um, we think the leadership course on the tactical level, uh, we uh, we implemented uh, several courses uh, like pre-training phase, uh, provided them materials as well, and then uh, put everything to the dashboard to analyze uh, for the uh, learning analytics to and to show the uh, exercise organizers the statistics after all so uh, after action review and it was oh sorry it was uh, uh, very very useful and uh, from the perspective of the uh, organizers and uh, observers it was uh, they were satisfied by the statistics there so then uh, uh, next year we tried also to uh, implement uh, ADL and exercises in the other exercises within our university also uh, once more on the tactical level and then on the operational with the uh, uh, operational level of the leadership courses meta standard exercises so and uh, there were provided another uh, courses for them as well during the pre-training phase and even during the exercises as well and we uh, use different uh, course formats. Uh, we, we started from the SCORM and uh, figure out that uh, there is the problem with the shifting the data and uh, collecting the data from the uh, this kind of uh, this uh, format of the courses. Then the last one, the last two iterations, uh, April last, uh, it was Tinkan, fully X API supported and even uh, we think uh, our cooperation with the ADL initiative, so and within the Madlex project, we uh, uh, try another uh, together with the Kinkan uh, format of the courses. We try uh, another format like uh, e-publications uh, format, and uh, there was the really uh, as a performance we compare with the performances of the different groups like the treatment groups and the target groups and we uh, discovered very high level of the differences with their performances of the practical task uh, of the students so uh, really if we conclude the examples of using kdl and exercises on our experience uh, there was the result and uh, it was great result. So in our plans in the future, continue implementing and the different exercises, also ADL solutions uh, on the pre-training phase and during the uh, exercises, because uh, to have access to the materials uh, anytime, anywhere, whereas the philosophy of the distance learning. So it's really, really uh, good for the students. And also uh, outside of the uh, give, uh, having the access to the material for the teachers and for the bosses to see the uh, to conduct the after action review. Uh, the statistics is really amazing and also uh, we're thinking how to extend it and uh, maybe 
the combination of the different data, uh, what kind of combination of the different data can be collected and shown on the, this dashboard. It's also as a future, uh, especially for the evaluation of the exercises, because exercises should bring the results. The, the main point, it, it should be effective. For, for that reason, we are using all those technologies. And uh, the nearest future for us as well, um, Ukraine is involved in the Viking 22 exercises. Uh, so uh, we're expecting to uh, to use also to find a way how to use ADL technologies uh, in the frame of uh, Viking 22 exercises. It, it will be another experience for our side. Thank you. Over to you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Maxime. Uh, I think uh, um, th there's, uh, there's, uh, this is a beautiful uh, um, uh, sort of new crazy world that we're in. Uh, um, uh, so Maxime uh, from Ukrainian Armed Forces is right now um, in Virginia at the NATO um, e-learning conference. Um, and, uh, and I'm uh, in Macedonia um, uh, broadcasting that, uh, back. So we're we're, we're each uh, um, maximizing technology and uh, and uh, uh, double dipping in, in many ways. So uh, so thank you, Maxime, for for, for joining us um, uh, out there in the, the conference hall. That's uh, that, that's really wonderful that you took that uh, took that extra step. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. And actually, yesterday was the panel uh, together with the generals and. Uh, I was honored to invite it there as a technician guy who was sitting next to the general. So, and it was one of the points discussed the uh, analytics, uh, learning analytics data. And there was highlighted uh, the Madlex projects as well that and the experience that the necessity to, to, to do that. And uh, all of the uh, panelists, uh, the um, uh, high level panelists, so they. Uh, also agreed that it's necessary to do and there is the uh, future to use the ADL in exercise. Great, and, and that's uh, and that's it too, you know, by, by integrating ADL into exercises, you can win all kinds of new friends and allies um, and storytellers, people who can tell your story, people with authority, like generals, um, uh, who can uh, speak to the value that you delivered uh, to, uh, to, to their event. Um, and you're absolutely right. Ultimately, it's got to deliver. That's that's what exercises are all about. Um, uh, slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, again, what we're the, the the standards document that we're targeting then is the official NATO document entitled the NATO Advanced Distributed Learning Handbook, um, which is owned and maintained by the NTGIT and ED. And what there, our task group is doing is drafting an annex to this handbook, um, on, um, an annex on um, ADL uh, in exercises. And I probably should have popped a QR code into this slide, but you all have the slide, I think, you can download it. Um, there is a hypertext link to the handbook as it currently stands, if any of you are interested in, in accessing it. Um, it's a living document, the, the handbook is. That is to say, it's it's constantly being reviewed and updated uh, by the uh, by the NATO training group, um, and uh, and we anticipate that the annex on ADL and exercises will also be uh, a living text. Um, we will um, uh, on a regular basis uh, bring new lessons um, uh, into that document. Uh, we're all new at this. Uh, we're all just beginning to learn. Um, and so the, uh, uh, the best practices that we lay out uh, this year uh, may well be overcome by events um, as we become much, much better at this um, over, uh, over the years to come. Uh, I hope it does. Uh, and, uh, and we intend for this uh, to be a, a living document to match the, uh, uh, the NATO ADL handbook itself. Slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, and this is a, a quick, also just uh, for the purposes of, of description, uh, um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, brief table of contents of, of the uh, annex. Uh, to go through uh, the, the basics as a kind of introduction, it's going to be pretty short, so that's something that you could take to leadership easily. 
uh, um, a bit on explaining um, exercises themselves. One of the challenges that we have uh, in the ADL community is we don't speak the languages of, uh, and, and I, I think it's appropriate to say languages of exercises. Uh, um, and it's so it's important for us on the ADL side to learn more about exercises. How do they work? How are they structured? What are their acronyms? Um, what's important to them? Um, and then to move on and talk about ADL in exercises so that you can take that language that you've learned on, uh, on how exercises are structured, how do they function, um, uh, and then start thinking uh, uh, systematically about how ADL inserts. Um, and then we'll close off with a couple case studies on, uh, on, uh, on how that's worked out. Um, and the case studies will not be uh, um, all uh, um, shiny bright success stories. Um, each of them will also elaborate things that didn't go quite right, uh, things that we can do better, um, and, and which have helped us to capture uh, lessons learned that we will carry forward in, in future events. So those three case studies will be the, uh, 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 will target the, the Viking series, uh, um, the uh, NATO standards uh, exercise in France, uh, just reference, um, and BoldQuest, which is uh, an event that is run by uh, JSJ6. And then next one is actually just going to be in a few weeks um, in October, uh, late October, early November. Slide, please. Oh, yeah, great. So Liz was also good. She put the link for the uh, ADL handbook up in the, in the chat for anyone who's interested. Uh, the uh, uh, thank you, Liz, for that. That's great. Um, the exercise planning cycle itself um, is the starting point, right? So we're here to support an existing thing, um, and is that exercise planning ex execution cycle? Um, here on the slide, there, uh, um, and again, you can take this home. There are a number of uh, reference documents. Um, it's uh, again, it's important that as we approach the exercise uh, community. Uh, that we speak their language and that we refer to their own standards documents. Right? Um, we're not trying to uh, reinvent hot water here. Um, we're leveraging uh, um, an existing uh, um, planning process that works well. Um, we're here to help make it even better. Um, and, uh, and this is the NATO uh, cycle beginning with strategic guidance. This is generally from, uh, from top leadership. Moving into design, this is where you really start to have a core planning team engage, preparation and, and build of, of the scenario and the, uh, and the learning materials, ultimately execution, but then evaluation and uh, done generally by uh, exeval um, and, and analysis. Um, the, uh, uh, the exercise is not just step four, the execution. The exer exercise is the whole cycle, right? Um, and ADL belongs at each step um, in, in that process. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk about exactly what does that mean. Um, slide, please. So uh, um, again, we're, we're talking about uh, um, at that uh, um, strategic level, uh, that's also where we're identifying the training uh, um, uh, objectives. Uh, um, we can, uh, when we move into two and three, this begins to talk about some of the ADL stuff that we're doing. We're thinking about what kind of training is required, right? Um, uh, we'll think about uh, how that training should be delivered. Um, ultimately, the execution is about the training audience, the scenario, and, uh, and XCOM, right? Um, so those are the sort of the keys of uh, moving parts in execution itself. Um, at the same time, you have observer trainers, observer trainer mentors, sometimes they're called, there during execution, making their observations, both subjective um, and, uh, uh, and, and objective. Um, there's, uh, then you move into the post-training analysis component. This is where Exeval is ultimately delivering their uh, final exercise report, usually about uh, six to eight weeks after the exercise is held. Um, uh, that leads them to uh, analysis phase uh, um, and immediately into uh, um, lessons learned that are driven into the strategic planning for the next uh, cycle. So for the Viking series, for example, I uh, last week was in Sweden um, and left the, uh, um, uh, uh, the main planning conference. Um, uh, there um, drove about 70 kilometers um, into Stockholm for meetings at the Ministry of Defense, where immediately we started talking about uh, uh, Viking 26. 
Right? So even now, uh, about six months uh, prior to execution for Viking 22, uh, we are already beginning the strategic uh, planning process for, for 26. So it's the full cycle that we have to keep in mind as we interface ADL uh, with, with exercises. Um, that time cycle, that full exercise cycle is not short. Uh, um, if, uh, in the US, uh, we call it uh, the JELC, uh, um, uh, the, the joint exercise life cycle. Um, if done to the book, uh, the JELC is 440 days. Right? Um, it, so that, that exercise cycle is a long one. Um, so this uh, we sort of stretched out uh, into uh, horizontally the, the, the steps of what you might be looking at doing in ADL at each point. But I think the key uh, message to take from this slide is just how much time it takes. If someone calls you up two and a half months before an exercise and says, hey, we want some ADL, come over and, and, and deliver for us, very unlikely that you're going to be, be very successful. Um, you aren't sufficiently integrated early enough in the planning cycle to really be able to deliver. Um, a lot of people will be disappointed um, and, and you yourself as an ADL uh, a provider will be pretty frustrated yourself as well. Not saying it can't be done, uh, people can lift all kinds of heavy loads, uh, but uh, uh, the, the true uh, cycle is something closer to two full years, right? Um, uh, if you're going to really be successful in, in exercise, less than a year and and it gets really, really hard. Um, importantly, again, here you can see execution is not the end of the chain. Reporting, and this is where you take uh, uh, the, the analytics, the XAPI, uh, um, and the observer mentor trainer uh, data um, uh, and mash that together for, uh, for ROI analysis. Um, that's, uh, in, in many ways, some of the most valuable, well, that's from a management perspective, that's some of the most valuable time spent um, in the exercise, because that's when from a management side especially, you're doing the learning on how can we improve things next time, how can we do a better job of delivering to the warfighter um, so that they can maximize, optimize their, uh, their performance uh, against the training objectives. Right, so this is then pulling those two elements together, the exercise um, uh, and, and the ADL. Right? So again, 24 months out, we're looking at that's where we're doing strategic guidance, um, uh, um, the, uh, um, and, and, you, and there, this is where, especially in, and when the generals sit on a panel and start uh, um, engaging in this way, telling these kinds of stories, that's exactly what we want. We want to make sure that uh, ADL is there at that strategic thinking uh, um, uh, stage of the game. We don't want to be uh, um, a, a sideline. Um, or, or an extra that's added on. We want to be considered from the very beginning as a strategic asset, um, as, as a, a core operational capability uh, that is delivered uh, um, uh, in, uh, that, that supports the entire cycle. Right? Um, and so we want to be there in, that, in the room in the conversation of, uh, for strategic guidance. Um, when we do design and prep, uh, uh, the real key actors here are going to be uh, the core planning team, the CPT. Um, here with the, the Viking series in particular, we found uh, um, some uh, incredible success with uh, Viking 18, um, ADL, uh, ADL's contribution, you heard Nicholas tell the story, was in many ways kind of an ad hoc um, add-on um, where we pulled it together and we made it work, but it was not systemically uh, integrated within uh, the, the exercise planning cycle. Now, um, uh, ADL serves, at, on, it, it holds one of the chairs on the core planning team of, of the uh, exercise itself. So there is a Viking 22 uh, um, uh, ADL member of, of the core planning team. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Nicholas was just uh, named to that seat. It was held by someone else who got a little overworked and Nicholas was, was brought in to, to hold that seat. Um, uh, and I know he's going to do a wonderful job of it. Um, the, uh, um, but that itself is a huge step forward. That's not about delivering, uh, that's not about standards in terms of what kind of course content do you use, what does your data analytics look like, that, that's standards from the perspective of who sits at the table in the core planning team, right? And when we think of best practices, uh, it's, it's more on the, uh, um, the, the organizational design side um, uh, rather than the learning design side, but it's criti critical to success to think in this big uh, uh, in this big way if you're going to be successful with ADL exercises. Um, ultimately, uh, that uh, execution 
um, uh, phase is, of course, super critical. Um, Pre-training uh, classically begins in the two or three or maybe 10 days before you show up at an event. Sometimes people are given uh, um, the, the call to go to an event pretty much at the last minute. They turn around the next day, they go uh, to serve on the training audience. Um, but oftentimes they're given uh, even up to uh, two months prior notice. Um, so uh, uh, what, what we're doing with, with ADL is we're extending that pre-training pre phase just prior to execution so that the training audience has time to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to catch up um, uh, on their own time, in their own ways, um, uh, on, on platforms that they prefer, um, that they can be uh, ready for, for the event. Uh, we found that actually uh, equally important uh, to providing uh, um, pre-training for, for the training audience itself is also uh, providing pre-training to uh, XCON. Um, to the observer trainers uh, and mentors. Uh, if you want your uh, observer trainers to be delivering uh, um, scoring on a daily basis uh, for, the, for the teams that they're observing, but it's delivering that scoring in a uniform way across the entire exercise, even more complex if your exercise is distributed like Viking, where you have uh, distributed sites in Ukraine, in Bosnia, in Brazil, um, and Sweden, you want to make sure your OTMs are operating with uh, a consistent methodology as, as they're scoring their teams against the training objectives. Um, you can help to do, achieve that aim by uh, making sure that your OTMs receive uh, the appropriate pre-training uh, prior to the event, um, XCON as, uh, as well. Um, so, uh, um, and throughout this uh, um, uh, steps two, three, and four, uh, another really important player is uh, um, exercise evaluation. So the XEVAL team get started even as early as step two and three. Um, so the XML team uh, uh, was more or less announced at the main planning conference for, uh, for uh, Viking 22 uh, just this last week. Um, and, uh, and another uh, ADL member, uh, Thomas, who's unfortunately not able to join us today uh, from the Swedish ADL team, he sits on the, uh, on the XML team for, for Viking. I sit on the XML team as well. And that's not a coincidence, that's because uh, uh, Sweden uh, and, and the United States through the Viking uh, series have, have come to really value the analytics that are uh, delivered by uh, ADL um, as, a, uh, as a resource for, for XEVAL. Um, uh, um, but to do that, to maximize the opportunity there, you need to make sure that ADL is involved from the very beginning with XEVAL when you're thinking in the design and prep stage so that you can uh, make sure that the analytics that you're capturing during execution are uh, responding to the questions that uh, uh, that, that XEVAL is, is driving, right? So in many ways, they're, they're one of the key customers for the analytics uh, prepared in, in execution. Ultimately then, uh, um, uh, as uh, with the analytics really uh, shine in the evaluation and, uh, and, and analysis phase, and then it feeds back in, uh, again into uh, strategic guidance. Our, uh, um, our annex, this is just a slide. Um, it's a lot of words. Some of it's pretty small print, uh, but, uh, um, but there's a lot of moving pieces here. The annex itself will break this down in uh, about 23 pages. Uh, again, with a two or three page uh, um, introduction that's, that's much sort of shorter and sweeter, and a couple case studies at the end that really help to give it life, that it's not just boring bureaucratic standards language. Uh, um, uh, and, and again, trying to, as this slide in a way illustrates, bridge the, uh, uh, the exercise community and their priorities and their cycles um, with what the ADL community can deliver to them. Um, so that exercise folks have a much better sense of, uh, of the opportunities uh, and the value that, that ADL can deliver. And so that the ADL community has a much richer understanding of, uh, of the customer, so, uh, of who it is that they're working with, um, uh, what their language is, what their priorities are, what their timelines are, um, and how they can most deliver uh, at different moments in, in those cycles. Uh, slide, please. I think we may go back one. But I think... Yeah, so let's, let's, let's just go back one because that's the end. We can stay here. Um, uh, I want to pause and see, I don't see any questions in the chat right now, but, but just to, to uh, 
I'll bring it back to uh, Nicholas and, uh, and Maxime and, and Mitko. Do you have anything that you'd like to, to add uh, to, to what I was outlining? I think that the important thing to keep in mind is, is I'm just, I'm kind of a talking head here. The guys who uh, uh, really are, are in the lead and sort of driving the requirements and, and also uh, using uh, these standards are, are these guys. Uh, um, and, and importantly, and I think this is really uh, an important part of, of how we built this standards development process, is uh, uh, we have, uh, as, as Maxime and, and Nicholas were, were detailing, uh, the people who were themselves uh, uh, deep in the mud uh, working through this, this operational integration of, uh, of ADL into, into a, a number of exercises uh, um, in, in their local context. Uh, those are the same folks that we've got uh, supporting the, the drafting of, of, the, uh, of, of the standards themselves. So this is coming straight from the horse's mouth, um, and we're going to try to uh, build it in a way that is as practical and user-friendly, um, as turnkey as, as we can possibly make it. Um, uh, Nicholas, do you, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, I, I totally agree, and I, I'm looking forward to keep on working with this. I mean, this is based on quite a lot of years of experience and quite a lot of people have been involved, but all in all, it's quite a small group of people. But as soon as we can have this uh, public, I think then when people start to interact with, with the Annex and start using it, we can get lots of and lots of feedback and and we can go back and uh, rewrite the, the annex and become wiser as we go along. I think that that's. But we have very soon we have a starting point, a sort of a flag in the sand where we okay, this is uh, this is not the end. This is a starting point, and we together we can uh, learn from each other. I think that that's a, a good thing. Yeah, and, and just to, to highlight as well in terms of timeline, so we will uh, present a draft, a full draft, written draft of, of the annex at the MTG meeting that will be held here in, in Skopje uh, um, in the second week of, of November uh, for review by the, uh, the full uh, MTG uh, um, uh, uh, group for, for individual training and education. Um, based on their feedback and comments, and based on feedback and comments from uh, sessions like this, uh, we will then do uh, revise and rewrite uh, and submit for final approval by the MTGIT and ED at the spring gathering, which uh, um, I believe will be held probably in May or something like that. Um, and then it will become uh, uh, a true part of that formal NATO document um, and, and we can promulgate it as, as a standard. Um, uh, Maxime, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would like to say, Aaron, uh, thank you for the great explanation of the annex and uh, would like to add that it's really uh, important to have everything standardized uh, as detailed as possible because uh, for us, we also started from the like, you know, uh, like uh, in the testing process, so we didn't know from which step for what what is the next and so on and so on and also I agree with Nicol Nicholas what is will be the uh, good thing that uh, when it will be started uh, uh, using so uh, you know, we will have feedbacks like because there are big variety of the exercises and different approaches can be also uh, used for using ADL and exercises because some of them like uh, international and uh, uh, you need a lot of planning for them, some of them less. And so this is also probably different uh, you know, small uh, things uh, which con uh, it should be considered. So it's a great result and uh, definitely uh, when we have very uh, detailed guidelines for uh, uh, for 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 the partners for for, for the uh, countries and organizations who is going to use ADL and exercises, it definitely will be really really helpful. Thank you. Excellent. Do you have any closing thoughts? 
Actually, this is new for me, but uh, thank you for explanation and thank you actually for uh, showing us what you are focused on, what uh, you work on, and what is very important. Uh, actually, uh, if I understood well, is that it will be like uh, some uh, document that can be upgraded later, which is very good. I'm pretty much sure that what you actually is like for one month or now, and what you have is, is not like the, the document which will be like final version and nothing else can be done. I'm pretty much sure that we'll see some gaps there, but in the end, it is possible uh, this document to be updated in the future uh, through different accesses and we'll see what are the gaps and then uh, include other comments, etc. But uh, thank you for explaining and actually for me, I think that this will be, at least for us here, for the region of Western Balkans, Southeast Europe, it will be maximum low thing or very important for them. So if you can, it's very nice to have such uh, such document and, and it will be very good. So thank you for the information. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, Greta has asked if she could say something quickly. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you very much. You may be surprised by my initials, but they are in Cyrillic. Uh, anyway, I'm very glad that I uh, got this invitation and uh, listened to, uh, to this presentation. Um, but first of all, let me say congratulations to Mitko. For Mitko, congratulations for your promotion. I'm very glad uh, because you absolutely deserve this. I'm so glad to hear that. Then, um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I represent the Partnership for Peace uh, Consortium. This was uh, the organization that uh, was in the in one of the circles that Aaron presented uh, at the beginning of the presentation that is uh, partnering with uh, the other two, the ADL Global and um, the NTG. And um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have been collaborating for some time with uh, uh, many institutions. Uh, and especially uh, lately uh, during the last uh, past year on ADL in exercises and as a group we are uh, willing to, to, to contribute as much as we can um, um, to this uh, endeavor. Uh, just let me tell you something interesting about this afternoon, about the, the role of ADL. This afternoon uh, I participated in three um, in three big conferences. Uh, I mean, this one is not a big conference, but it's a very interesting webinar. So, um, first of all, I attended the NATO Clearing House, um, the final day, which uh, is conducted in Poland. And um, at the end of the Clearing House, at the end of the session, they mentioned, they said that they had developed a strategy for distance learning. And this strategy will be distributed for review and it will be um, uh, approved uh, next month. So this was in Poland. At the same time, Paul is chairing the NTTC. This is the NATO Training and Technology Conference in the United States. So we, we, we can also participate in that in the United States. And now uh, we are talking, you are in North Macedonia, so uh, these um, ADL um, capabilities are um, endless. So in one afternoon you can cover the, the globe and you can attend so many, so many um, important events. Uh, so thank you very much and I look forward to cooperating with all of the, all of the institutions and hopefully the situation will allow us to meet face in face in Skopje in a few uh, weeks time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Greta. The, the PFPC ADL Working Group is a community of, of incredible innovators. They're real heroes of the pandemic. Uh, uh, many of them uh, switched their local uh, centers of excellence into full-on national systems for learning um, in a matter of days or weeks. Um, uh, they worked tirelessly and, uh, and they've learned a lot in the meantime. Um, and so the PFPC uh, ADL Working Group to me is, is a great source of, of, uh, of energy for their enthusiasm, but also inspiration for all of the innovative ideas that, uh, that they've developed through, uh, through really uh, adverse times. Um, at the same time, they've really proven uh, the, uh, uh, that, that ADL is an essential component 
of the resilience of the armed forces uh, um, in, in tough times. When the rest of society doesn't function, um, military training and education can carry forward and ADL is an essential component of that. Um, uh, um, our integration of ADL and exercises is, 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 uh, is a great way to, to push those, those, those innovations from the ground up, from communities like PFPC, um, uh, into testing grounds where we can uh, really uh, stress them and uh, uh, learn and spread that learning to, to the broader community of allies and partners. So thank you, Greta, and, and for all of your efforts and, and, uh, and time. Um, if there are no other last questions, then, then I'd like to, uh, to close it at that, uh, to thank my, my panelists, uh, Nicholas and, uh, and Maxime, and especially Mitko again for, for generously offering uh, this, this incredible facility here, uh, Military Academy in North Macedonia, Skopje, I highly recommend uh, that you come here as, as much as we are about distance learning. Please come visit. Uh, it's an incredible country. Um, they've got a great educational uh, facility here for learning. Uh, they do all kinds of, of multinational activities. Um, they are especially good at, uh, at cyber uh, training um, and, uh, um, and, and, and Skopje itself is, is a wonderful town. So, uh, so please, uh, despite all this e-learning, come physically and, uh, and see the place. You'll love it. Uh, thank you, everyone, and, uh, and, and see you soon. Thank you, Aaron. Um, two more things before everybody logs off. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you to the panelists. And then thank you to everyone for joining and participating. Um, one more, two more things to plug here. iFest content. If you missed iFest, all of the content, all the recorded presentations are online through October 1st. You can find those at adlnet.gov. You can find a link to get to those on our website. And then our next webinar will be Accelerating CMI5 Adoption, Exploring the Conformance Test Suites and Tools with Ryan Miller and George Filters from Verskishi Software and Andy Johnson from ADL Initiative. And I'll drop a link to that in the chat in case you're interested in seeing that one too. And these slides and the recording of this webinar will be available online. Thanks so much, Liz. Thanks to you as well. We couldn't do it without uh, you in the background making it all work. Thank you. No problem. Hope everybody has a great day.